Well, hello everybody out there on the internet. This is Real Man Pones, and I'm getting ready to uh, can me some meat, some beef stew meat. So the, I've washed my bottles and lids, and um, a word about sterilization. Uh, according to the experts, and I'll leave a link below, you don't need to sterilize your jars unless your processing time is going to be less than 10 minutes. Anything over 10 minutes, you don't, they don't sterilize in the water bath canner or in the pressure cooker by themselves. So, but you do need to wash them with soap and water and rinse them real well. And uh, I'm going to have to heat the lids here. Uh, next thing I have to do is I have to lubricate my uh, pressure canner. Lubricate the threads here, all these threads, and the rims and the little bevel inside. So uh, let's start with that. See, we'll have to lubricate this rim, this little sort of bevel here, and this right here, and uh, the threads. So, first, first we'll put, get a little of my Carapelli Delizia Italian olive oil. Olio extra vergine di oliva. So, put a little bit in this bowl. Just a little bit here. And I'm going to take my finger and just lightly oil this. You don't want to really leave a lot on here. You just want to get it like that. Just a little bit. This helps keep it from sticking after you're done because that pressure, that's some high pressure, or a vacuum actually. The pressure creates a vacuum and pulls the lid down onto it. Okay, now let's do the lid. Right there. Well, you can see that. That's pretty much all the way around there. Now we're just going to set that on there. Where's my little arrow? See, there is an arrow there. Which matches, uh, which way? I'm gonna have this facing the right way. There we go. Arrow matches right here. There. And then we turn it to hit the arrow. Now that's closed, that'll stay that way. Let me wash this bowl. In a minute. Oh shit. Gotta do the screws. So we'll just get a little bit of
deep screw. That helps it from, uh, you know, sticking. back with you when I start uh, the process. Alrighty, I'm back and I have my stew meat right here. Beautiful. If there's any extra fat pieces, I'll try to cut them off. But uh, yeah, I like it this way because you don't have to cut up a bunch of meat, but eventually I will because it's expensive to buy it this way, so I'll just show you what you do. Right there, you just take your pieces and put them in the jar. It's really not difficult. And I'll use this to stuff them in. out of every one here, every pack, I might have to use more jars, we'll see, pack them in good and tight, and, uh, and repeat the process, I'll be right back with you, well, I'm back again, now they're all full and ready to go, I've just got to wipe off the rim to make sure there's no particles on there, and, um, some people put salt on top, like a half teaspoon of salt, uh, for flavor. But I, I, I'm going to use this better than bouillon beef base. And you use this because the first ingredient is beef. Roasted beef. And not salt. Although there's salt in it. So there's no need to put water or anything in it because the meat will make its own juice and fill up the bottle. So now I'm going to put the lids on. Oh, 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 no, I'm not. I got to wipe the rims. Anyway, I'm going to wipe the rims and put the lids on, and then we'll put them in the pot. All right, I'm back, and I've wiped the lids. Now we're just going to put these lids on. finger tight no need to tighten them too much because you want to uh, there'd be enough give for the air to come out so you're just going to put them finger tight I guess I'm using my fingers here because what matters is the lid not the ring our bottles into the pressure camera. Let's see. Pressure canner will hold supposedly ten. We'll we're just using six today. And you don't want them to touch each other or touch the wall. And there we go. Now we'll put the lid on. Where's 
a, a little mark. Where are we at? I can't find my mark. It's got to be here. There it is. So, let me just put this on. Spin it to the closed position. It's already on high. And now, we do the opposites. Let's see. I'm going to make sure this gets level. And opposites. You're doing good. Not you know, not overbearably tight, but good tight. And now I've got to wait for it to steam. Got to wait for it to steam. Once the steam starts coming out at a regular rate, I'll set my timer for 10 minutes and let it steam for 10 minutes. Then I'll put my weight on it, bring it up to 10 pounds pressure for my area. I'm only about 115 feet above sea level, so it's 10 pounds pressure. If, uh, they have pressure, pressure uh, graphs that tell you how much pounds you have to use according to your elevation and mine is 10 pounds and then I'll run it for an hour and 15 minutes which is 90 minutes alrighty Well, as you can see, the steam is blown. I don't know if you can see, but uh, the steam is blowing out. So now I've got my timer, 10 minutes. Let that vent for 10 minutes to push all the air out of the container. Then I'll put my 10 pound weight on and uh, bring it up to pressure and time it for uh, 75 minutes. Looks like it's leaking a little bit there. I hope that doesn't uh, stop them from coming up with pressure. But we will see. So now I'm going to put the weight on 10, which is right this bottom here. And let it come up to pressure, and then I will start my 75 minute timer. Okay, now the looks like the leaking thing is stopping, and it's leaking, or it's coming out there too. And hopefully that will stop once it uh, gets up and starts. There we go. So I'll be back with you when it's up to pressure. Alright, it's starting to get close to the pressure. I'm now going to lower the heat because we're gonna, it won't need that much to maintain the pressure. Be right back with you. Well, everybody, it's uh, maintaining its pressure. On. Yep. It's maintaining its pressure. And every now and then that little weight Jiggles to relieve a little pressure to get, keep to the 10 pounds. So, uh, there we go. See it jiggle? That keeps it from going above 10 pounds, which is why you have that weight. So now I'm going to start my timer at 75 minutes, and I'll be back with you when it's time to turn it off. Well, the 75 minutes is up, so now I have to turn off the stove and just let it sit there 
and go down to zero and stop wiggling and shaking before I can open it. So here we go. We'll turn you off. And I'll come back. It'll probably take an hour for that thing to come down. Well, here we are, and it appears that it is going down to zero. Weight stopped moving. It's been about 40 minutes. So let's take off the... Not much uh, pressure left. Steam and there is woo steam. And there we go, the finished product. So let's uh, put it down here. Move that over there. And you can see it's still boiling inside there. soft and flexible and not cold so they don't break. You hear them popping already. Boy, that smells good too. I can smell it. Still bubbling. Yumminess. It made its own liquid. So there was no need to add any water. And that uh, beef, better than bouillon beef flavor, has done its job. Man, I wish I could eat it now. See if we can hear some popping, more popping. Yeah. Stiff, stiff, and they're all stiff. So I'll leave those for 24 hours, although I'll probably transfer them to my room very carefully. And that'll be that. I'll probably make a video sometime in the future after my diet where I eat one. Make some beef stew or something with it. This has been Real Man Pose. Canning beef stew meat. <laughs>